Iroquois Natural Resources and Technology is our next topic of study here, so get your notes out and be ready to follow along. First of all, the basic rule of life for Native Americans, including the Iroquois living in North America, was that if they could not make the product from what they had in their environment, then they did not have it. So, we'll see what that means in, in reality here. The technology of the Iroquois was controlled or limited by the natural resources that they found in their environment. They did not have the knowledge or skill to make metal goods or woven cloth. Their tools, weapons, cooking items, clothing, and housing were all made out of items that they found as they were in nature. So think about that. They did not have the technology to make cotton woven fabric or cloth. They did not have the technology to make metal hammers or axes or um, anything, eye bars to build buildings and skyscrapers. And they didn't have the, the technology to make silk cloth, wool cloth. They didn't have the, the resources, rather. So um, the Iroquois way of life was quite different from European way of life or even today, our way of life. A natural resource, and take a look at the definition there, it is that they are materials found in nature, which is the environment, that are necessary or useful to humans. So anything found in nature that humans need to survive or can use to survive are natural resources. And we have two examples here that the Iroquois had. Number one, wood. They used wood to make their homes, tools, canoes, baskets, weapons, spoons, and snowshoes, among other things. And number two, stone, used to make axes, hammers, arrowheads, and knives. You think about those things. Today, stone is replaced by metal of some sort, but the Iroquois did not have metal. They didn't know how to work with it. They didn't know, uh, they, they just didn't have that natural resource in their culture. Three, animals. So uh, the Iroquois used animals for their meat for food, skin for clothing, bones for tools and weapons, and only the animals that were found in their environment. Four, the Iroquois used clay to make pots, bowls, pipes, and toys, and any, anything that, could, that needed to be hard and uh, could be moldable. Five, they used shells to make wampum belts because wampum belts were critical or vital to their way of life. They used shells to make the belts. Okay, Iroquois tools and weapons. We're going to look at those and see how Iroquois tools and weapons evolved as, as time went on and as contact with other groups of people uh, happened. So number one, prior to the arrival, prior means before, before the arrival of the Europeans, Native American tools and weapons included bows and arrows, spears, war clubs, axes, and knives. If you look up here, you'll see stone uh, axes and stone knives, stone tools, stone arrowheads. And the, the positive side of stone tools is that stones are very easy to find. The negative is that they are not as strong as metal tools would be. So uh, tools and weapons were made from wood, stone, and bone. But after the arrival of Europeans, Native Americans began using European tools and weapons made from metal. These new weapons included guns and uh, metal axes, metal knives. And uh, the Iroquois had never seen things like this before. They had they'd never seen guns. So what a difference. Imagine that difference from going from hunting with a bow and arrow or a spear to having a gun where you can reach out 50 meters, 100 meters, really reach out and touch those animals and knock them down versus having to sneak up using, it's just a lot of different skills. And so you can see that as the tools and weapons of the Iroquois changed, their way of life began to change as well. Keep that in mind, because that's a very important issue that we need to talk about as we study the Iroquois and study all Native Americans. All right. Um, 
liturgy, the Iroquois villages, and the concept of land use. Now, Iroquois villages were located near fresh water for a variety of reasons, and I want you to know these reasons. Uh, the rivers, the fresh water was used for transportation, irrigation for crops, drinking, fishing, and bathing. Also, villages were built on high ground for protection against enemies and wild animals, and they were surrounded by a wall of logs known as a palisade or a stockade. Around the villages were fields for farming, and inside the village, the Iroquois built buildings known as longhouses. The longhouses is where the Iroquois would live, and each group of Native Americans that we're going to study, they had a different kind of home that they would build. Uh, again, for probably the fifth time, the Iroquois depended on their environment for all that they needed, and they only took what they needed. They did not waste resources. And they uh, also didn't own the land that they used. They used what they needed, and they shared the land with others. So hunting parties from different tribes would go on to different tribes' land. It's very different than today where we have deeds, and we have trespassing and no trespassing laws. People are not allowed to go on land that they do not own, but that just is completely foreign to the Iroquois and to many Native Americans. Um, seven and eight go together. Villages moved every 10 to 20 years, and they moved when the resources of the area were used up. And typically, since the Iroquois depended so heavily on farming, they moved because the soil would wear out. And once the soil wore out, they had to find new soil for farming, find more fertile soil. They did not have the technology of um, the ability to fertilize like we do today. So for finding fertile soil was extremely important to the Iroquois. Here's a picture of a typical village. You can see a river around it, a body of water for transportation, cooking and bathing. You can see the stockade, this big wall around the village right there. Here are the farm fields, and again near the river for irrigation. And then the picture, a picture of the shelter for the Iroquois, the longhouses. And then around them, the forest. So a group of Iroquois would arrive at this location, and it would be all forest. And then through the months and years, they would chop down the forest, clear it out, and build their, their villages. And again, this is a typical Iroquois village, and you can find um, places that fit this description all over this area. And of course, I mean, all the, the, the longhouses are not there, but we can find where they used to be. And... Um, and learn quite a bit from them. 